Hey, do you, do you feel like uh, in the year and a half or so you played for the Lakers that you have become, obviously the defending champs, but have you taken over the Warriors perch as the team with the targets on his bat, the, the, the kind of the standard of the league these days? Uh, I think when you're a defending champs, you kind of hold that, you know, standard for the league. Uh, I don't say we took over the, the Warriors won a three out of four or something like that. So we don't, uh, you know, we haven't accomplished that yet. But I think whoever the defending champions are kind of hold that standard that, you know, each team wants to um, become. And, um, you know, we have that target on our back this year of, you know, teams trying to match up to, to beat the Lakers. And, um, you know, it comes with the territory when, you, when you're when you holding the title. So, uh, you know, we've been doing a great job of continuing to do and what we do and get better at what we do to hold that, that title um, and try to um, keep it here in L.A. for this season. But, um, you know, every night you're going to get, you know, the, the other team's best shot. And, uh, you know, we've seen that um, a lot this year with, the, with our team. Kyle. Congratulations to your football team. No, thank you, Kyle. Man. I appreciate I that. <laughs> um, first off, before you knew Kobe, um, was there something, either a move or maybe an element of his style that, that you emulated as, as like a teenager or something like that? And sort of as a follow-up, why do you think Kobe sort of inspired um, imitators and, and, and just had this generation of people who uh, wanted to be like that? Um, believe it or not, when I was younger, it was more the LeBron era, so I was always watching him. Um, but I did, you know, watch Kobe um, and his back, I mean, you know, being from Chicago, MJ, and then, you know, watching Kobe, you know, kind of emulate his game and the, the back to the basket turnarounds and stuff. Um, always kind of, you know, stood out to me. Uh, just how, how much create uh, space you create, uh, you know, with just a small turn on your shoulders and your hips. So I kind of just always watch that aspect. Um, but I just think, you know, I mean, we hear it now with his mama mentality. I think that just kind of resonates with everyone, um, you know, in their personal lives as well, you know, not just in sports. And, um, you know, the way he, you know, was on the floor, just a fierce competitor. Um, the way he was off the floor, um, such a, a loving guy. Um, I think it's hard for people not to love Kobe and, and not to not see the inspiration that he tried to give to the world. Um, you know, especially, you know, with his daughters, the way he, you know, supported them and did so much with them. I think it's just, um, it just sets a standard, you know, for, you know, what everyone try, try to become, you know, as a parent um, and for us men, you know, as a man, as a father, um, as a husband, you know, all those things that he was, you you, you try to, um, you know, look how great he was at those things and try to, um, you know, do the same thing with, with your personal life. Bill? Hey, D, um, kind of going back to the, the Warriors question, um, I'm just wondering, you and LeBron both signed your extensions to um, be here long term. You know, have you guys? I mean, do you think about what that could be and what that you know what that could be by the time you know you guys are to the end of those contracts and what kind of um, I mean, dynasty obviously is everyone's goal, but I mean, what, what you know what you guys could do in, in the three more years? Um, we take it year by year. Um, you know, once you start looking too far into the future, um, you start getting blinded by what's in front of you. And, you know, we, we talk about this year, how good of a team we have and um, trying to repeat. You know, that's our only thing this year. And then next year, we worry about next year and the following year. Um, and then I think he'll be done uh, with his contract. So we just try to take it year by year and try to figure out um, what we can do to, to make sure we win a championship this year. Um, and then after those years, you know, we look back and on it and, and can you know laugh and smile and joke about you know what we have accomplished? Melissa Rowland. 
Hey Dee, um, how much do you think LeBron's outspokenness on social justice and politics has inspired and encouraged other guys around the league to do so as well? Um, I think, you know, he's the face of the league, you know, and so when he says, when he says something, um, everyone listens. And I think it gives confidence to, you know, other younger players or other players who are not as outspoken um, to do the same thing. And, you know, it's, it's, you have a lot more confidence to say what you want to say when you have, you know, a league who has your back, you know, uh, and, you know, anybody who has your back in general. You know, when you got a guy who, um, you know, backs the players in this league and, and wants the best for everyone and, supports everyone, I think that um, you can speak out. And when guys see that, um, you know, Braun speaks out or, you know, Braun says something about any subject matter, he uh, then they feel comfortable to do the same thing. Um, is it Tuk or Tuk? Tukin, sorry. Um, okay. Speaking of that, um, with what's happened in the past year, what does it mean to you to be able to play on MLK Day tomorrow? Uh, it's an honor. Um, I think in my career, I think I probably played four or five times on MLK Day, and it's always an honor. Usually, you know, being in New Orleans, it was in Memphis, which was a whole different honor. But I think just playing on MLK Day is an honor for me, is an honor for our organization, for our team. Um, you know, like you said, especially when you know everything that's going on around the world um, over the past year, and then leading to this year, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to hear a lot of guys speaking out tomorrow um, about everything that's going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about starting a season, you know, tomorrow, uh, just make it more powerful. But you know, for everything that um, MLK did for us, um, you know, did for this world. Um, anytime you get a chance to, to play on MLK Day and, and represent you know, what he wanted all along, um, you, know, it, you, know, you couldn't be more happier to, to do so. At least I, 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 I I'll definitely be happy to, to play. Sorry about that. Uh, last question, uh, Kari. Uh, what's happening, Nate? What's man? Uh, you said you looked up to, uh, you kind of like looked up to LeBron, you know, and watched him growing up, you know. So, so what does that mean to kind of like to play with him to this day? I know, like, you know, you said it to the fact that you, you know, you in the NBA, and you were a superstar yourself, but what does that mean to play with somebody that you kind of, you know, watch growing up? Yeah, um, it's crazy you say that because when I was, when we were in the bubble, um, he was getting like, accomplishment after accomplishment, breaking record after record. And, you know, me, him, and some of our guys that uh, was was with us was making a joke about how, you know, next he's going to break the record for, you know, most, you know, shoes he's tied. And, you know, it was just crazy things that he's breaking records for. So, um, and I was on a bus one day uh, on the way to the game. And uh, I can't remember what game it was. It was in the playoffs, though. And, um, I was on Instagram and I saw a post about, you know, LeBron, and it was basically saying that he was top three in, like, almost every statistical uh, category. And uh, I sent that to him, and I sent him, like, this long – I got to see if I can find it – this long paragraph on um, about it. And they were just saying, like, I remember when I was a kid going to – you know, driving from on a Greyhound bus by myself, you know, 15, 16 years old, going from Chicago to, you know, Akron for your camp and um, seeing you for the first time. And, and you're such an inspiration to all of us that you might not know. And it's just crazy how everything comes full circle. So now we're on the same team battling for a championship. Um, and it was a lot more, like, in-depth about it. But, um, you know, you kind of just hit these moments where you realize, like, the guy I looked up to and had all his shoes and wanted to be like, and now we're teammates, you know, one of my closest friends. So um, it all just comes full circle. And I'm pretty sure he was the same way, you know, with a guy like Kobe and and um, even, you know, not getting a chance to play against MJ, but uh, he probably did when MJ with the Warriors. I'm not sure, but, um, 
you know, it was kind of like that same feeling for me. And I kind of just told him that. And it felt kind of awkward just walking to the locker room, like sending a heartfelt message to him. And now we about to go play. And we right next to each other. So like, damn, what is he going to say? Like, man, you soft or like, we, we don't see this before a game. So it was kind of weird. But um, he said nothing about it. And, you know, after the game, he said something, you know. So it was, it's a pretty cool moment to, to be able to play with one of the guys, play alongside one of the guys you look up to. Um, 